In recent months, VR gaming headsets are getting released one after another, and it's getting really hard to keep track of all of them and decide which one to buy. If you're just now getting curious about VR, how do you make sense of all the features and figure out what's important? The terminology alone is enough to confuse anybody. What's the difference between Fresnel and spheric lenses, QLED, OLED, or LCD displays? And what the heck is PPD? In this video, we will go over the main qualities of the hottest and newest VR headsets and at the end you will know exactly what to look for and you will never wonder again. PlayStation VR 2, HTC, Pimax are all releasing their new headsets this year and a bit earlier we've also got Pico, Vario and of course Meta Quest headsets. How do they compare to each other and which one is best for you based on their features and visual quality? I guarantee you'll have your answers by the end of this video. To start off, let's make a clear distinction between standalone and tethered headsets. A standalone headset doesn't require a computer or a smartphone to operate. Instead, it has all the important parts built in the headset itself, like screen, processor, sensors, and battery. These headsets are usually light, portable, and convenient, ready to work right out of the box. MetaQuest 2 at the moment is the most popular commercial standalone headset, but it was released more than two years ago. Two other standalone headsets, Pico 4 and Quest Pro were released just last year in 2022 and are still very new. And finally, the newest standalone headset, HTC Vive XR Elite, was announced just a month ago and it will be available in the coming days. Those are standalone, but there are also VR headsets that need to be connected to a computer in order to operate. These headsets have more powerful hardware and can provide a more advanced VR experience compared to standalone VR. The newest ones are Pimax Crystal that should be released in a matter of weeks, and of course PlayStation VR 2, which already has been spotted in the wild. I will also include Vario Aero here, as it's one of the most recent PC VR headsets with the highest visual quality to date. It's worth saying that all standalone headsets mentioned in this list also can be connected to a computer to play PC VR games if you want to. The most important feature of any VR headset is the immersion. It's what makes VR VR. What is it that makes the things that you see in VR seem so real is the quality of the image, and that is allowed by mainly two things in your headset, the type of lenses and the display. The lenses and the display work together to create the illusion of this virtual environment, but they serve different functions. In simple terms, display generates the image that we see, and the lenses magnify it and shape the image to create a convincing 3D illusion. The quality of both the display and the lenses are important for an immersive and comfortable VR experiences. Let's start with the display. The cheapest and the lowest quality of the display technology used in new VR headsets is LCD. LCD display use a backlight to illuminate the pixels, but that usually results in a less vivid image and difficulty displaying true black colors. When all pixels are illuminated, black colors on LCD displays usually look more like gray and the image certainly lacks contrast. However, the technology technology is also cheaper, and that allows creating cheaper headsets like Quest 2 and Pico 4. They are both budget VR headsets that use LCD displays. But it was a surprise for me to see that a brand new XR Elite from HTC also featured two LCD panels, which frankly was more than noticeable when I was wearing the headset. You definitely will not see high contrast and true blacks in this headset. I'm not really sure why the developers did not opt in for a better type of a display in such an expensive VR headset. For example, they could have used mini LED LCD displays, which is another type of a display used in VR, but it's a newer technology. Mini LED LCD use smaller and more numerous LEDs for the backlight. Smaller LEDs means that they are more precise and in general can provide better image quality and contrast. These are used in two headsets on the list, MetaQuest Pro and Vario Aero, both of which have very good visuals, still they are not quite the same. Quest Pro features something called local dimming, and this is really interesting and new for VR headsets. Local dimming allows the display to control the brightness of individual sections on the display. Think of LED displays like having a bunch of light bulbs in the room. Instead of controlling the brightness by adjusting all of the light bulbs together, local dimming allows adjusting different parts of the room separately. So so that you have brighter 
lights in some areas and dimmer lights in others. And that dramatically improves the contrast and makes the overall image look a lot more realistic and vivid. West Pro has local dimming and Vario Area doesn't. However, the display resolution on Vario Area is much higher than on Quest Pro. And although it might not be as high in contrast, it's ridiculously sharp and clear. So I mentioned resolution, which is of course another very important aspect of displays. But all you need to remember here is that the higher resolution is, the better. And so far, Vario Air and Pimax Crystal are winning in this battle, having almost identical and unbelievably high resolution. What's even better about Crystal is that it also includes local dimming, just like Quest Pro, making the bright and dark colors insanely vivid. And on top of that, it has a QLED display with mini LED backlighting. What does that mean? QLED displays use quantum dots to produce more vivid and accurate colors. And combined with local dimming and high resolution, I saw the sharpest and the most beautiful image in VR than in any other headset. Yet there is still one type of display that can deliver even brighter colors in VR, and that is OLED. OLED displays don't have a backlight, but the light is created from each individual pixel, which allows for perfect black levels and the most colorful image you can ever imagine. PlayStation VR 2 has such a display, and although the image quality is not quite as sharp as in Crystal and Aero due to the lower resolution, the colors and the brightness are absolutely jaw-dropping and will impress any VR user who tries it. Love, love, love it! Now that we know everything there is to know about displays in VR, let's talk about the VR magic created by different types of lenses. The first type is Fresnel lenses, spelled like this. These are pretty common in VR as they are light and cheap to make, but they usually cause more distortion and reduced image quality and sharpness compared to the other two types of lenses that we will talk about next. Quest 2 has Fresnel lenses, which undoubtedly contributes to its lower cost, but can you guess what other headset has it. You will never believe it. It's actually PSVR 2. However, it's not the same for Fresnel lenses as in Quest 2. Sony actually patented a new method of manufacturing a Fresnel lens, which can suppress certain visual artifacts, also known as god rays, that are especially prominent with high contrast elements. I tried PSVR 2 and it was incredible, but I did notice that the image wasn't as sharp as some other headsets. Still, I believe that this decision was made to reduce the cost of PSVR 2 as it was already starting to climb higher and I think that they decided to compromise by putting in cheaper lenses to include other awesome features in this headset. Next we have delicious sounding lenses called pancake lenses, which have the advantage of being lightweight and compact, making them perfect for use in VR, but they also produce clear image with fewer distortions compared to Fresnel. Pancake lenses are the hot new thing for for recent standalone headsets like Pico 4, Quest Pro, and XR Elite, all of which are very small headsets. Pancake lenses provide a better image quality than Fresnel, but still not quite the best. There are VR manufacturers that don't mind making bigger headsets, and that's where we can come across something called aspheric lenses. I told you that lenses magnify and shape the image to make it appear 3D. That's why many lenses kind of look like a sphere, which often may cause image distortions. Aspheric lenses, as is in the name, has a non-spherical shape, which can reduce distortions and improve sharpness. It provides incredible visuals, but at the cost of the size. Aspheric lenses are larger and heavier, they may be more difficult to manufacture, and so they cost more. You will find these lenses in the most expensive headsets on my list, Pimax Crystal and Vario Aero. While they might not be small, the sharpness of the images on the next level. This unique combination of different displays and lens types can create very different visual experiences in VR. There are a few other things to look for in this new VR headset, such as gaming library. We need to know how many games are in the headset that we can play. PlayStation VR 2, for example, will launch with over 30 titles, but with many, many more coming later. These are some awesome AAA titles and also games ported from other VR systems. For example, one of my favorite games called Zenith. Zenith is one game that is coming to PSVR 2, which I'm very excited about.
about. It's a massively multiplayer online world built for VR with hundreds of hours of content. I previously played it on Quest 2 and PC VR and I covered it on my channel and I fell in love with this title. There's so much to do in Zenith. You'll explore a massive open world, complete quests, battle fierce enemies, learn new skills and make new friends. With its dungeons, raids, puzzles, social content and more, there's always something to do in Zenith. Until now there were two major classes that you could play, Essence Mage and Blade Master. But the new update for PSVR 2 will include a third class, Cyber Ninja. And by pre-ordering Zenith for PSVR 2, you will even get the exclusive Mecha Dingbo pad that is so cute and helpful. Zenith is coming to PSVR 2 on February 22nd, so make sure to pre-order it to get the best of its perks. 33 titles might not sound like a lot, but it's only a start for PSVR 2. Currently, Meta has the largest game library out there with thousands of games, which is going to make it really hard for other standalone headsets like Pico 4 and XR Elite to compete with them. But the good thing is that all of these headsets will support Steam VR games, with the exception of PSVR 2, of course. We also increasingly see eye tracking being incorporated in VR headsets, but few know the true benefits that this feature can bring. In addition to awesome eye tracking based UI design like we see in PSVR 2 where you can navigate the gaming menu and make selections just by your gaze, eye tracking also allows a feature called foveated rendering. What it basically does is it renders only the area of the image that you're directly looking at in the highest resolution, while the peripheral area is rendered in lower resolution. This amazing feature allows the VR headset to focus its resources only on the most important area of the image, saving computational power and reducing the strain on the system without affecting the visual quality of the image that you can see. It's indeed very impressive and we see more and more VR headsets include eye tracking with the exception of budget headsets like Quest 2 and Pico 4 and XR Elite for some reason. I also think that a replaceable, hot swappable battery should be a must feature in new standalone VR headsets. And so far, only XR Elite nailed it down with their small form factor and a removable battery that pretty much turns your headset into glasses. Form factor and comfort will be increasingly important for VR headsets in the near future, and tethered giants like Pimax and Sony will need to keep that in mind if they want to remain competitive in the market. There's of course so much more to say about each of these headsets, so if you'd like to learn more check out this video for a more in-depth review and I'm sure that you're gonna love it.